Unit two, lesson six, is the chain rule. And you'll see in a bit here, the chain rule is used when you have one function as the input to another function and you don't want to multiply everything out or you can't. And so part one, I'm going to split this into two parts, although in my head it's three, um, is doing the chain rule kind of the, the long way, showing decomposition. Where are we? Here we go. <clears throat> I need a cough button. In order to do that, you need to be able to break apart compositions of functions. So we'll spend some time on that at the beginning. And then once we can break apart functions, we'll be able to derive and use the chain rule to find derivatives of those compositions. And you'll see the notation that we use is going to help us figure out what to do. And so to kind of show you why you would want to know the chain rule, well, without the chain rule, each of these four functions to do the derivative, well, of f of x, no problem. We just have to square x plus 2. Um, g of x, kind of a problem. Um, I can square x minus 4, then multiply another x minus 4. But I really don't want to do x plus 7 to the fifth power. I really don't want to do x minus 9 to the tenth power. So the cool part is once you know the chain rule, doing these derivatives, you don't have to multiply everything out. And every single one of these, finding the derivative of f, finding the derivative of g, finding the derivative of k, they're actually all the same difficulty, the same level of complexity, the same amount of work. So that's where we're going. So to get you an idea about why we need to do something different, so imagine you're flying to Chicago to visit some universities because you're an AP calculus student. I guess that's your goal. And you stand up and walk to the restroom while you're on board the plane. If you walk at four feet per second, are you really moving at four feet per second? And the answer is, of course, no. You know, it's four feet per second compared to the seats on the plane. But compared to the ground below, you're moving a lot quicker. And so in my mind, the chain rule is kind of like that. You have to account for the rate of change of the thing inside. That's you in this case. Later on, when we do some derivatives here, it'll be a function. And you have to account for the rate of change of the outer thing. Um, in this analogy, the plane, but you'll see it's going to be a function as well. So by the end of, I don't know, the year the unit, whatever, you'll be doing chain rule with instead of one function inside another, uh, maybe a function inside a function inside a function, or maybe more than that. So in order to know how much chain rule to use, which is kind of a weird thing, you need to be thinking about the input and the output rather than just kind of staring at the functions you write. If you don't, you'll see you'll get confused. You're going to be like, do I still do another chain rule or something like that? I think it's easier to see how to decompose functions if we see how to compose function. So y is sine of something. Um, whenever I see u, you're going to hear me over the next couple of lessons say sine of something, and then that something is x squared. And that's going to lead into um, what I think is an easier way to keep track of what we're doing. And so... Again, the way to think of that is not y is sine of u, but y is sine of something. What's that something? x squared. Mm -hmm. So that's what we mean by composing functions, putting one inside of another. And the normal way you would see that is y equals sine of x squared. Oh, so why do I care? Well, uh, soon you'll have to take the derivative of sine of x squared. And so we want to be able to decompose that into, hey, this x squared is the input to this sine of stuff, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so how could we compose this? Uh, well, gosh, that's the same thing. Oh, we're doing the derivative, sorry. I should read my own things. So the derivative of sine of u with respect to u is cosine of u, and the derivative of x squared with respect to x is 2x. Now, the question is notation. And of course, y prime and u prime are kind of okay, but they don't give as much meaning. So for the derivative of y with respect to u, we're going to write dy du. And for the derivative of u with respect to x, that's du dx. So when we're done, we're thinking slope of a tangent line, change in y over change in x, all that sort of stuff for derivatives. So we want dy dx. Do we have anything we could put together algebraically to get dy dx? We sure do. 
If you multiply dy du times du dx, well, we're just going to get dy over dx. And so you can see, well, dy du is cosine of u. And du dx is 2x. And I have an eraser. There we go. So this is kind of the derivative, but not quite because we don't expect to see a cosine of u. Or really, I'm, I'm setting down some building blocks here for when we start off with y equals sine of x squared. Right? So really, we're thinking, hey, what's the derivative of sine of x squared? And we expect u to not be there. Um, and what is u? Oh, it says it up here, right? Um, u is equal to x squared. So we'll replace that u inside of cosine with x squared. So we can see the derivative of sine of x squared is cosine of x squared times 2x. Okay. So let's recompose here. And I'm thinking of y is equal to something squared. And the something that's being squared is sine. So I'm going to write it that way. Um, y is, well, just something squared. And what do we square? We square sine of x. How would you normally see that written? You'd normally see it as sine squared x. So how do we do the derivative of that? Well, again, what's the derivative of u squared? Pretty easy, 2u. What's the derivative of sine of x? Cosine of x. But again, we want to use notation that gives us a little bit more information. So instead of y prime and u prime, um, over here, we're going to do the derivative of y with respect to u, dy du. And over here, the derivative of u with respect to x, du dx. So again, we want to get dy dx. How could we do that? Well, we'd multiply dy over du times du over dx. And those du's would multiply out to be 1. So that's just dy dx. We can replace dy du with 2u. We can replace du dx with cosine of x. And of course, what are we doing? Really, we're doing the derivative of sine squared x. So we don't want to leave that u in there. We're going to replace u with what u is equal to, sine of x. So we get the derivative of sine squared x is 2 sine x times cosine x. So that's kind of where we're going. So let's decompose a bunch of functions. If you're sitting in my classroom, we're just going to work on the decomposition. And then again, we're going to go back and do these exact same ones. We'll decompose and then do the derivative all at once. And I guess that gives you double the practice of decomposition. And so when we look at cosine cubed of x, there are definitely two functions. There's the cosine function and the cubing function. And we need to decide which one's the inner function, which one's the outer function. Okay, And the outer function is the cubing function. So when I see cosine cubed, I'm just thinking of that as something cubed. What's that something? Cosine of x. And so the way we'll break that apart is, okay, that thing inside, the thing that's being cubed is cosine of x. So we're going to call that u. That way we can just have a little bit simpler visual uh, that we're eventually going to take the derivative of. Because the derivative of u cubed should feel real easy. That should feel like the derivative of x cubed. So that's what we mean. That's what I mean by decomposing. Okay. So how can we decompose cosine of sine of x? Well, what's the outer function? What's the inner function? The outer function is we're just taking cosine of something. And what are we taking cosine of, uh, of? That something is sine of x. So we're going to say u is equal to sine of x, or the thing inside is sine of x. And that means, how can we, we rewrite y equals? Well, that's y equals cosine of u. And again, we're doing this so we can do derivatives a little bit easier. Okay, so hopefully we're getting on board with how to decompose this into two different parts or seeing the input function and the output function. Uh, which function is the input, the cosine or the 4x squared? The 4x squared. So that means this is really the outer, the dominating function is cosine. So this is cosine of something, that something is 4x squared. So we're going to say u is 4x squared 
and y is cosine of u. All right, are we getting good at this? Hopefully. So this is y is cosine of, I don't know why I said cosine, probably because I'm tired, sorry. Uh, this is y is something cubed, and that something is 2x minus 7. So we'll say u is 2x minus 7, y is u cubed. y is 3 sine of 2x cubed. We can clearly see that 2x cubed is an input. So the structure here is y is 3 sine of something. That something is 2x cubed. So u is 2x cubed and y is 3 sine of u. If you have that, we're ready to go on to do the derivative of this composition of functions or these same compositions of functions. If you were in my class, hey, you could say, hey, we need a couple more examples. Um, yeah. So part two, we're going to do that same decomposition, and then we're going to do the derivative. Okay, so looking back, y is cosine cubed of x. We want to think, oh man, I can do the derivative of something cubed, and I can do the derivative of cosine. But this is a chain rule situation, because I have this one function inside another. So is this is the outer function cosine or is the outer function cubing? Uh, and the answer is, well, this is something cubed and that something is cosine of x. Okay. And then just visually, I think this is well organized because you're going to see I'm going to do the work kind of in parallel columns. It's like I've broken these two things apart. I'm going to do some work and then I'm going to bring them back together at the end. All right, so the derivative of something cubed is three times that same something squared. And the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x. So the reason I say it that way is once we're going to do not all of this writing, if we can just realize that cosine cubed x is just a cubing function. Well, we know the derivative of x cubed or u cubed or t cubed with respect to those variables is, well, 3u squared, 3x squared, 3t squared, or whatever I said. And we can see the notation here, dy du, du dx. Um, on the left-hand side, we're going to multiply dy du and du dx. And then on the right-hand side, we're going to multiply dy du, which is 3u squared, and du dx, which is negative sine of x. So we kind of created something out of nothing, but what we said is, well, dy du multiplied by du dx would be equal. And that's true. We're just doing a different form of each on each side. So what's going to happen? Well, of course, the du's multiply to be 1, so we're just going to get dy dx. And on the right-hand side, we need to get rid of the u. So we'll replace u um, with cosine of x, and we get the derivative of cosine cubed x is, I decided to bring this negative out front because that's a lot cleaner, negative 3 cosine squared x times sine of x. So hopefully that kind of makes some sense. So let's go back here. How are we going to break apart cosine of sine of x? Well, I just see this as we're supposed to find the derivative of cosine of something. So that's how we'll write it. Y is cosine of something, and that something is sine of x. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine, and the derivative of sine is cosine. Um, but we need to have the right notation. So over here, we're going to write dy du is negative sine u. And over here, instead of well, u prime or something, du dx, the derivative of u with respect to x. What are we going to do now? Well, we're going to multiply dy du times du dx on both sides. So on the left-hand side, we write those literally. And on the right-hand side, dy du is negative sine of u. And du dx is cosine of x. So we put those together. And hopefully you're going to see we get dy dx on the left. We need to replace the u inside of this sign with another sign. And we get dy dx is negative sine of sine of x times cosine of x. Let's try it again. So y is equal to cosine of 4x squared. It's pretty easy to tell that this is the outer function is cosine. So I'm thinking of this as y is cosine of something. 
and that something is 4x squared. And so what's the derivative of cosine? Well, negative sine of u, and we're always going to get that same input, which is really helpful when we're going to be doing the chain rule without work. The derivative of 4x squared is 8x. We're, of course, again going to multiply dy du times du dx. So on the right-hand side, we have what those are equal to. dy du is negative sine u. du dx is 8x. And so, again, the du is multiplied to be 1. dy dx is negative sine. We replace u with 4x squared and still multiplied by 8x. Just a couple more here. So I see this as y is something cubed, and that something that's being cubed is 2x minus 7. So notice we're breaking this apart, and now we actually have a really easy derivative. The derivative of something cubed is 3 times that same something squared, and the derivative of 2x minus 7 is 2. So we'll bring everything back together. dy du times du over dx is another version of dy du, 3u squared times another version of du dx, 2. So when we're done, we get dy dx is 3. Well, we'll replace the u with 2x minus 7, so 3 times that 2x minus 7 squared, times 2, which is the derivative of this 2x minus 7. I think this is the last one. So this is 3 sine of something, and that something is 2x cubed the derivative of 3 sine of something is 3 cosine of that same something. The derivative of 2x cubed is 6x squared. Let's bring everything back together. dy du times du dx is going to be dy dx. And over here, another version of dy du, 3 cosine u, and another version of du dx, 6x squared. When we rewrite, we're not going to leave u. We will replace u with the 2x cubed that we made up. So in the next video, um, part three, because you'll notice this was part one and two, uh, we will use this same idea to do the chain rule kind of the short way. But we want to practice this tonight, getting this decomposition down so you're thinking about inputs and outputs. Thanks for watching.